Hi, my name is Avery. I'm one of the technical advisors here at West System, and today we're going to talk about fillets. Uh, and a fillet, first of all, it's a fillet uh, like fill it up and not a fillet, like fillet of fish. A fillet is a concave surface used to transition between two planes. It helps increase bonding area, it reinforces that joint, as well as helps distribute the stress. Another important thing is that it makes it a lot easier to lay fiberglass over this area. Fillets are commonly seen in stitch and glue boats, but can also be used to help bond composite parts together. We recommend using a thickened epoxy for this process because it helps the fillet keep its shape better as well as stay in place if you're doing anything overhead. For filleting, we recommend using one of three of our fillers, the 405 filleting blend, the 406 colloidal silica, or the 407 low density filler. The 407 is a low density filler and the 405 and the 406 are both high density fillers. We won't get into that very much now, but that matters a lot when you're thinking about fillet radius. First, we'll talk about the 405 filleting blend. The 405 is a wood tone filler. It's similar to a mahogany color, and it's really great if you're doing a clear coat over your fillets. Next is the 406 colloidal silica. The 406 is really good for general bonding purposes, as well as creating fillets. It comes out an off-white color and can be easily dyed any other color. And finally, we have our 407 low density filler. It has a dark reddish brown color and is really light and easy to sand. Though, all of our fillers should leave you with a nice smooth surface that doesn't require very much sanding if your bead is laid down properly. So how do you lay down a fillet? Well, like most things in the world, there's a lot of right ways to do it. And we're gonna show a couple here today. Over here, we have two pieces of wood that represent uh, a stringer, and we're gonna show you how to bond them together. So I've mixed up some 105 resin with some 206 slow hardener. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna brush that onto our wood surfaces and allow that to soak in, and then come back a little later with some thickened epoxy uh, to fill any gaps between them. I mixed in a little bit and I didn't think it was thick enough. Uh, you wanna make sure it gets to a nice, thick peanut butter consistency. Uh, that way it doesn't slump or drip anywhere that it's not supposed to. And so now that I got my epoxy nice, nice and thick, I'm gonna lay it down in a bead onto my wood. Being very generous with how much I apply because I'm gonna shape whatever's left over into a small fillet. Make sure I get all of it out. And then I will take my other piece that I wet out over here and apply what's ever left. As we take it, we'll embed that down into the epoxy, pressing nice and firm, but not too much. We're just doing a small fillet on this side. And so we'll take the back of our mixing stick and just run it across. Use the other side to scrape up any excess we've got on both the top and the bottom. Looks like I left a little gap there. Uh, I didn't put enough epoxy in, so I'm gonna take it, fill it back in, and run it again, making sure not to leave any gaps, um, any air bubbles left in the fillet. Another important thing is to not overwork the epoxy, because the more you do, the more it's just gonna get everywhere and it's not gonna make a smooth bead for you. Unfortunately, we're not always working in perfect conditions on a bench top, on a flat surface, where you can easily lay your board into some thickened epoxy. Your board can be wobbly, you can't get enough clamping pressure to be able to keep it in place. And in that instance, we would recommend bonding your board into place before making your fillets. Over here, we have a board that we pre-bonded together that needs some fillets added. Uh, one important thing to remember when you're pre-bonding your boards like this is to get the thickened epoxy as close to this seam as possible. That way you're not trapping air pockets and you can draw it out into a nice clean fillet without any gaps in there. There are many different ways you can do this, including using our 610 thickened epoxy adhesive. It's really easy to use. It comes pre-thickened and it mixes everything for you right uh, in this nozzle.
and you can use the nozzle to inject it straight into your joint. Next we have our 810 fillable caulking tubes. Uh, they're really easy to mix up some thickened epoxy, fill them up, put the cap on, then place them into a standard caulking gun and you can treat it just like the 610, eject it right into our joint. Last but not least, we have a plastic bag. They're really easy to open up, fill with thickened epoxy, clip off a corner, and inject it right into your joint. So we have our uh, 105 resin mixed with our 206 slow hardener, mixed up back with some 406 colloidal silica to a nice thick consistency. And we're gonna use one of these uh, 810 caulking tubes, the fillable caulking tubes, uh, just to lay down a quick bead real quick. As you can see that uh, we've already wet out our surfaces and they're all ready to be filleted. Should be plenty for this, this fillet. And then we're gonna use the cap that comes with it, slide it into the hole. It's a little tough because it's a tight fit. So we'll just pop this in our gun right here. Um, I would recommend using a gun you don't care too much about uh, because you will get epoxy on it. And all that epoxy is all right in the back, so it's gonna take a while to get it pushed towards the front. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the tip here. I'm gonna cut it at a little bit of an angle coming up from the bottom so we get a nice bead. Clean that off real quick. You want to get it as close to the joint as you possibly can get and then just start filling away. You don't want to have an underfilled joint. You got to be very much in the Goldilocks zone with how much you put in there. Otherwise, you're going to have too much and it's more cleanup and more waste and too little is going to result in some voids that we want to avoid. Got a little light over there. There we go. And then we're gonna come back in a little bit. I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna fill up a plastic bag and we'll do the other side. Open up the plastic bag, take our remaining epoxy, uh, mixed with our 406 silica, scrape it off into there. And we'll push it all down to one corner. And you can uh, cover a lot of surface area this way because um, you can get a lot of epoxy here in this bag. But you wanna be careful uh, to not fill this too full because uh, you can start uh, getting a, a runaway exotherm. It starts getting too hot. You want to be careful to avoid that. So I'm going to give it a nice little snip here. Um, not a very big hole uh, because the size of your uh, flow is not going to be determined by that hole. It's going to be mostly determined by the pressure that you exert as you squeeze the bag. And here we go. Keep it nice and smooth. Keep all the air out. Keep it very close to the joint. There we go. Then we can come back, come back with our fresh mixing stick and run it across. And you see, I was a little too light on it near that front. So I'm gonna have to come back and fill it again. Uh, we got a little extra here. We can just run it back, flip it back around to our side we did with the A10 caulking tube. So another important thing to remember is to keep your uh, mixing stick parallel. Uh, that gives you this fixed radius. Uh, this is about a 3 8 inch radius on these mixing sticks. Uh, you want, if you tilt it closer to a 45 degree, you're gonna get a flatter fillet. Uh, and it's gonna be a little bit, uh, use a little bit more epoxy uh, than if you keep it here tight at a right angle. It's also important to no note that you, once you're getting a lot on your mixing stick, you're gonna wanna remove it. And you'll notice that I'll, if I have applied too much, there's gonna be leftovers left above my fillet. You're gonna wanna make sure to get those cleaned off uh, before the epoxy get, starts getting tacky, starts curing. Otherwise, they're gonna be really hard to remove. Um, you're gonna have to sand through them all. Another way to keep your area clean is to put down blue painter's tape or something of, of the like. And 
you want to make sure you remove that as soon as you're done making your fillet because if you don't it'll cure uh, onto your wood and it'll be almost impossible to remove nice and clean here we go clean up your extra area so you don't have random pokey bits of epoxy sticking out at you There we go. So we've shown a lot of examples where we use our mixing stick as our radius, but sometimes that's just not big enough, not small enough, or it doesn't fit what we need in that instance. Uh, a lot of boat plans specify what radius you need. And what I like to do is take our plastic spreader and cut them into shape uh, where you can get a smaller radius or even a much larger. You can also leave a straight edge on each side so that as you go and scrape, you have much wider margins that you're cleaning. So we're just gonna trowel this on. It's gonna be a much larger radius than I had previously. And so making sure to keep it as close uh, to that joint as I possibly can so I don't have air bubbles. And you'll notice I've, I've gone fairly thick on that. That was mostly on accident, but also a little bit on purpose. Because um, I'm not quite sure how big of a radius this is gonna be. And so we'll take our larger tool, put it at 90 degree to our surface, and begin to make our fillet, making sure to remove our excess regularly. I have this nice 90 degree angle, so it's already pre-cleaning my bottom surface for me. So, it's like I put on a lot more than I actually needed. Make sure to keep it nice and clean. There we go. I have a couple air holes in there, so I'm just gonna go over it one more time. Uh, just to try in those areas, just to try to fill those up so I don't have any uh, weak points in my fillet. And then scrape it off and then one more time, pass over the surface. Come out with a nice, smooth and clean fillet. And I'm gonna come up, put my 90 back up on this side to clean the top off. And now we have a fillet that matches what was specced out in our boat plan. And so sometimes, uh, again, you don't get these very nice angles. You have something where you're working on your stitch and glue boat and you have something where three corners come together. And that's when it starts to get really difficult to determine how you're gonna do it. And a tool that I like to use are these filleting balls or the uh, ball end tools. Uh, they're round, it doesn't matter what kind of angle that you're at, you're gonna get the same radius all the way around and they make doing these corners where more than one piece comes together much easier. We've already got the surface pre-wet out for us, ready to get some more thickened epoxy and ready for that fillet. I'm gonna come in with my thickened epoxy, fill it right up. It's very hard to get into these tight corners, so you have to pack it down in there. Uh, so you get a good continuous bond. As you can see, troweling it on is a lot messier than going with a caulking tube 
or a 610 or even the piping bag. Most of it will get cleaned up anyway when we do our fillet. Use something like our plastic scraping tool from before to clean off any excess that is left behind. You'll notice that I'm using a larger tool to clean up the excess epoxy. That way I don't disturb the fillet that I just created. And as you can see, we have a nice point uh, where all three of our lines come to meet. So why would you want a different sized fillet? The size of your fillet greatly impacts the strength and how loads are distributed when forces are applied to your joint. You want your fillet to be about the same strength as the materials that you're bonding together. So if you're bonding together half inch plywood, you're going to need to use a larger fillet than if you're bonding together quarter inch plywood. Additionally, if you're using a low density filler, we recommend using a larger fillet than if you're using a high density filler. Sometimes you don't need a huge fillet. If you're using your fillet primarily to transition fiberglass around a 90 degree, you can get away with a smaller fillet. You only want your fillet to be as big as it needs to be because the larger the fillet is, the more material you're gonna use and the heavier it's gonna be. To demonstrate the impact that si the size of a fillet has on the failure method, we have two different sized fillets made with our 407 low density filler. In an appropriately sized fillet, we would expect to see the wood to crack right above the fillet that we made. In an undersized fillet, we would expect to see an adhesive failure from the bottom substrate as the fillet is pulled away from the wood. To demonstrate this, we're gonna take our, our appropriately sized fillet and clamp it down to the table, and I'm gonna pull on it. So I've clamped down this appropriately sized fillet onto the table, and so we'll, we expect to see a failure right above the fillet. Now I've clamped down an undersized fillet to see where it breaks. What I expect to happen is a failure right along this bond line. With the largest fillet, the load was distributed over the entire area of the fillet, causing the weakest link to be the vertical piece of wood. In the undersized fillet, you can see that the load was not distributed across a large enough area, causing the weakest link to be that top layer of your plywood. The same principle applies when you're using the high density filler, but your fillets can be smaller. Today we learned that filleting is an essential part of the building process. It helps increase strength and adhesion in joints and helps distribute the load more evenly. They can be customized to any size and shape that you need for your particular situation. Uh, whether you're putting together a stitch and glue boat or you're just transitioning your fiberglass around a 90 degree curve. Fillets can be a little bit difficult when you're first starting out, but with a little bit of practice, you can become a pro. If you have any questions, please reach out to our West System technical team. We'll be happy to help you out.